Hey everyone, good morning. Pastor Rob here from Community. Uh, it's our daily Bible reading, and I'm really glad to have this time with you today. A question for you. Did you ever, ever have a time when you just thought you weren't accepted into a group? Like it could have been as a, a kid on the ball field, and you know you were like the last to be chosen, or people kept looking away from you, because I know that story. Or maybe you have started a new job, and you're the low person on the totem pole, and you just, you know, everybody had their inside stuff going on. I actually remember going to a new church. It was new for me. And I was about 16 years of, the, of age. <clears throat> and I distinctly remember being in a youth group activity feeling like nobody wanted me there. Like I was, I just felt like, I, I felt like the outsider. Well, these are not uncommon things to happen in our lives at one stage or another. And there's something that actually Jesus wants us to pay attention to because it's so easy for us to then become the insiders who make it hard for an outsider to get involved. So, hey, this Sunday we start a brand new series, What Made Jesus Mad? Have you ever thought about that in the scriptures? When we look at, at the Savior, Jesus Christ, things that really pushed his buttons in a holy way. Well, look at scripture. Let me read our scripture to you. It's actually one of the Apostle Paul's letters, Ephesians chapter 2. And it speaks to one of these things that we know made Jesus mad. Paul says this, Ephesians 2, verse 11 and 18, through 18. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who, are, who call themselves the circumcised, which is done in the body by human hands, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus you who were once far away, who, who, were, who once was far away, had been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with all its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to, peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Amen. Well, one thing we all know, uh, we live in a very divided world, a very divided culture, don't we? I mean, we've, we've seen this so much in the last year with differing opinions about the pandemic and what to do or not to do with COVID. We've certainly seen it with the political world and the divisiveness of right versus left. We've seen it over justice issues. We see it as a country between rural and suburban and, and urban and, and states on the West Coast and East Coast, but not the center states. And, and we see it in the world where it's, you know, the USA versus European countries or European U.S. country versus African countries or Asian countries. And, and this, this immense amount of division and diversity in our world. Um, there's something like 200 countries in our world. There's something like 11,000 languages and there's something like 20,000 actual ethnicities, distinct distinctions in our world. So lots of difference, right? Go back in time to, the, to Jesus. There was lots of ethnicities, lots of differences. And probably the most basic is what Paul talks about here is like there was Jews and there was Gentiles. And the Jews, of course, were the Hebrews that God started his, his redemptive work with. And then anybody else was considered a Gentile, a non-Jew. And, and yet, one of the things the church got to address was that the gospel, the good news of Jesus, was for everybody, Jews and Gentiles. So Paul addresses that here and, um, and makes it really clear that we were once far off and far away, but we've been brought near by the blood of Christ. That Paul says, he himself is our peace. And he made the two groups one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Now, we desire that, don't we? we? We desire to see that more and more in our culture and in our differences, that the walls of hostility would come down, that we'd live into oneness. And yet at the core of it, we know that can only happen through the divine touch, the divine reality of Jesus in our midst. And the church gets to model that. Jesus gives us a chance to become one with our different backgrounds, different cultures, different ethnicities, but to be one in Christ. And he says, now we, now we have peace, and Jesus has reconciled those, and we, we have peace to those who are near. So, why is that passage important? Because the church 
is about bringing people together. It's always about making room for people. So of course it's bigger today than, between, than just Jew and Gentile. Most of us are Gentile by background. Uh, some of you are Jewish by background and bloodline. It's bigger than that. It's bigger. It, it now touches all the diversity of our culture. Can we be a place that embraces that diversity? Because why? We are one in Christ and Christ invites us to come together. Not to, not to the neglect of our backgrounds, because a Jew is still a Jew, a Gentile, a Gentile uh, uh, is still a Gentile, but because of the saving work of Jesus Christ. So, it's a, it is a sin for the church to become a place of exclusiveness. Like, this is our gathering. If you look like us, feel like us, talk like us, have all our same values, then you're in. And if you don't, you're out. Do you see how tragic that would be? So, so this is our challenge. Will we have open hearts and open arms to people, wherever they might be coming from, whatever their background, whatever their beliefs might even be, to hear and experience the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? I have a prayer that I'm beginning to pray more and more often, and simply this. Uh, my, my pr I'm, what I'm doing is I'm praying for one person to share God's love with every day. Praying for one person to share God's love with every day. And, and it's like, okay, Lord, who's in, who's in front of me? Who, who's on my heart? Um, and I, I hope that'll be more and more of your prayer too. As we think about our place as a church at this time of history, in this community, in this valley. Because here's what, here's what makes Jesus mad. It's when insiders start to make it hard for outsiders. When somehow insiders start to feel like they have a, a monopoly on everything and every decision. So may Lord help us on that. Now, this coming Sunday as the new series starts, and Pastor Brett will bring this first message, we're also going to be having communion. We had this last Sunday, and I said we're going to be having communion every work week during this special season called Lent. It's time to, to draw near to God, to return to Him. And maybe there's some things on your heart that you'll realize, okay, I need to address that. I want God to help me in this area. Because I don't want to do, I don't want to be a kind of person that inadvertently, a Christian unless, that would make Jesus mad that we'd somehow put up barriers or exclude people. Let's pray. God, we confess how the church has so many times, inadvertently, certainly, sometimes very, uh, Clear, clear thinking, like if we've made barriers at times, Lord, we confess that. Um, Lord, may we be the place where the scriptures live out that, that through the cross that the dividing wall has come down and, and there's peace to those who are near and we come together in Christ. Help us in this journey, Lord. May you continue to show us one person to share God's love with every day. Uh, thank you for your goodness for your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, dear friends, have a great day. Look forward to seeing you uh, hopefully this Sunday, either in person at 1030 or online at 9. Share the news about it. God bless.